Okay, so for question 11, we need to prove that x minus 4 is a factor of f of x. Now, if x minus 4 is a factor, then it is true that f of 4 will be 0. So we are going to work out f of 4. And because it's a prove that question, I'm going to kind of show my substitution here to make it really clear to an examiner. So I'm going to do 2 times 4 cubed minus 13 times 4 squared plus 8 times 4 plus 48. Evaluating this now is 128 uh, minus 208 plus 32 plus 48. This equals zero. So now I'm just going to write f of four equals zero. Therefore, x minus four is a factor. Lovely. Right. Part B. Hence, using algebra, show that this equation is only distinct two distinct roots. So, job number one. We're going to divide, so we're going to factorise f of x by dividing through by x minus 4. So we're going to do some algebraic long division here. Oh, sorry, I've written the wrong thing. That should just be plus 8x. And so when we are doing this sort of algebraic long division, we're asking how many x's, how many x's go into 2x cubed, which is 2x squared. And then we multiply across. So we do 2x squared times x and 2x squared times negative 4. And then we subtract. So we're doing minus 13 minus minus 8, which is minus 5x squared plus 8x. You then say how many x is going to minus 5x squared, which is minus 5x. Again, we multiply across. Again, we subtract, giving minus 12x plus 48. So again, we're saying how many x is going to minus 12, which is minus 12. We multiply across. And we're left with the remainder of zero, so it divides exactly. Now, how does this show it's got only two distinct roots? It doesn't yet. So next step is going to be to see, can we factorise this expression here? And yes, we can. So, I mean, you can do any method of factorising that that you choose, but that is going to factorise into 2x and x at the beginning. And then, so we're looking for two numbers that times make negative 12. It's going to end up being negative 4 and positive 3 here and when you expand that out you'd get back to 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. So what this means then is that f of x can be written in the form of x minus 4 squared because there were 2x minus 4s and then 2x plus 3 and so this is why it's only got two distinct roots because one of its roots is when x equals 4 and the other root is when x equals minus 3 over 2. OK, and so we've done all the work there to show that it's only got two distinct roots. I'm just going to label this point here as 4 and this point here as minus 3 over 2. So should we keep track of what we've got? OK, so then for part C of this question, deduce giving reasons for answers, the number of real roots of the equation, blah. So what we just need to do is we need to think about how this and this relate. And all that's happened, this was plus 48 and this is now plus 46. That's the only change. So all that's happening is my graph is being translated two units down. That's what's happening because see the graph is being translated two units down. So all of these points just get moved two down effectively. And so we'll end up with Something a bit like that. That's what my new graph will look like. So how many solutions will this have? How many real roots will this one have? And the answer is this will have one, two, three. So it will have three real roots. As it will intersect.
the x-axis three times. And then for part D, so for part D, we have to have given that k is a constant, the curve of the equation y equals f of x plus k passes through the origin. Right, okay. So what we need to think about is how my original curve could pass through the origin, which is here. So for the original curve to pass through the origin, and this is a translation left or right, It could, bearing in mind that this point here was at four zero, it could move four spaces to the left. And then a translation of four spaces to left to the left is represented by f of x plus four. So k could be four. But then the other thing that could happen is it could shift to the right. And it could shift like 1.5 or 3 over 2 spaces. Right. And a translation of 3 over 2 spaces to the right would be represented by f of x minus 3 over 2. And so therefore k could also be negative 3 over 2. 